So, ready to make a difference? Building a better planet starts with you. Hey everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of Aqua Kids. Today we are along the Potomac River at National Harbor where we'll be electrofishing these waters, releasing thousands of largemouth bass and restoring spawning fish habitat. Let's get started. So one of the things we're going to be doing today is putting some wood into our reef out Hey Joey, here. good to see you again. Hey Andrew, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Hey. Can you tell us about the projects we're working on today? Oh absolutely. We are going to be putting some uh, wood into our reefs out here that we created last year. We're also going to be releasing about 3,000 young largemouth bass, wow. about three to five inches. That's right. And we're also going to be electrofishing so that we can survey these reefs and learn what's living in those, uh, in, those, in those little concrete and wood structures out there. Nice. So the reefs that are in the water are similar to the ones we see here? Yes, absolutely. A little similar. They look superficially like the ones in the water, but there's this, an important difference. The ones in the water are hollow. These are solid reef balls filled with concrete. And on the outside, they do have these depressions that are similar to the ones out in the water. It's just the big difference is that, again, these are solid filled with that concrete. So the hollow ones that are in the water provide protection for the smaller fish? Right. The, uh, the fish like to use these kinds of what, what we call interstitial spaces. They're little spaces or crevices that occur naturally in structure that actually enters the water from, say, forests or trees along the shoreline. Um, these are very similar, except they're not natural structure, right? They're made out of concrete. But we wanted to kind of resemble that natural structure by providing those interstitial spaces for the organisms to kind of swim through and live in. So that's why out, out in the water, they're, they're hollow. Nice. So why this location? So we chose to put the reef balls out here along with the wood structures that we're going to be putting out here because historically this was a really important area for bass, largemouth bass, to spawn in. There's been some development in the area and when that occurred uh, we lost some of that spawning habitat. So a way to replenish that spawning habitat and protect the fishery was to try and restore this area for largemouth bass. So we added these reef balls and we added some wood bundles that we'll be working with today to try and replace the type of habitat that we lost uh, historically. Orc is usually used for oysters? Yes, they're usually used for oysters, especially in the Chesapeake Bay, a little further down river from here. But uh, we don't have any oysters this far up. And this is the first time that the state has ever used oyster reef balls, or these reef balls, in a freshwater setting. So we're hoping uh, that they will attract fish a lot like the reef balls that are put out in the Chesapeake Bay do. And so we'll see that today when we're out electrofishing around our reefs. Are we going to put in reef balls today? No, not today. We did that last year. That requires a lot of heavy equipment. And today, um, we don't have that with us. But what we are going to do today is we're going to add to our reef with some wood bundles that you guys are going to help us create. And that wood is natural habitat for bass and other fishes. So we're going to actually be improving the habitat that's out there already with some natural, and, uh, some natural habitat. Cool. Let's so let's go. go. Yeah. Right. It's time for Aqua Quiz with your host, Drew Cruz. I'm your host, Drew Cruz, and it's time to test your knowledge with another Aqua Quiz. Reef balls have been used to promote growth and create habitat for aquatic and marine creatures. Which of the following creatures have been benefited by reef balls? A. Oysters. B. Fish. C. Corals. Or D. All of the above. I'll have the answer after the break. Aqua Kids will be right back. Welcome back. What creatures have been benefited by reef balls? The answer is D, all of the above. 
reef balls have provided places for oysters and corals to grow and provided habitat for fish. I'll see you next time with another Aqua Quiz. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. Hey, Tim. Hey, Joe. Hey, Aqua Kids. Hey, How's everyone? Tim's going to show you guys how to build a wood bundle for our reef out here. All right. All right. Simple process. What we're going to do is we're going to take these pieces of wood here that we've already got pre-cut holes in. We're going to run the cable through it. Okay, yep. See, when you, you, you bind it real tight, you have you know, a little extra cable here, and we will hook it uh, together with one of these cable clamps right here. Well, you know what, guys? This looks pretty easy. What do you say we give it a shot? Yeah, let's go. All right. You did a fine job. It looks like great habitat for the fish. Thank you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The Scoo Farm is a rare breed animal farm located in Katona, New York, in the middle of Westchester County that is open to public visitors so they can learn hands-on about how a farm is operated. Although I do really love being with the animals, the serenity and calmness of the forest area of Miscu Farm is really what I enjoy most. What I see in Xerxes is an attitude and a commitment to do the work that needs to get done. He will identify an issue that he can help um, not just something wrong, but something he can really do to make a difference in his community. When these barns flood, the water actually all drains and mixed with the animal sewage, and it eventually drains to the reservoir. So I brought in contractors, dug everything up with heavy equipment, laid some trap rock down for a solid foundation, and for most of the barns, we actually put in downspouts and a gutter system. Now when it rains, all the water that flows down from the roofs of most of the barns gets channeled into this gutter which then feeds into the sewer system that takes the water away from the barn so that it won't mix with the sewage. That effectively eliminates two tons of annual sewage from draining into the Mesquite Reservoir. It's keeping clean water clean, it's um, not going through the farm where it's going to pick up anything, and so it was a huge um, effort and a huge gift. Over the four years at Mescoot Farm, I coordinated over 125 volunteers. It's not only because I helped this many birds or installed this much pipe work. I mean, those numbers are all great, but I think at the end of the day, it's the human connection that drives you. I think the crux of the project lies in devising something that people can work on and take part in, where the effect of that is not even that it's just carried into the future, but it's magnified in the future. One of the things I'm most curious about the farm is to imagine what it would be like to visit the farm in 20 years and see the impact of my work. Aqua Kids will be right back. Want to keep up with our adventures? Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. We're ready to take the largemouth bass from the holding tank to the boat and ready to release them. Okay guys, so this is what you're going to do. You're going to grab the fish using these nets. So you just dive this net straight into the water, grab as many fish as you can. Oh wow. Yeah, <laughs> and try not to let them jump out of the net. And these are uh, little baby largemouth bass. Beautiful. And we're going to hand them off and have them run down to our electro fishing boat where we have a tank all set up for these guys so that we can release the fish on our reef. Okay, I'm first. All right, get a good scoop and then we'll hand it off to Rachel. Okay.
Okay, so we have all the fish in the well here, and we're going to go out and release them into our reef. All right, do they all go to the same spot? Uh, we may put them in a couple of different spots. Okay. Yeah. We've got a couple of reefs out there, so we may kind of divide them up. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. We've got grass right here, so this is a good spot. All right, so we're going to go ahead and scoop the young largemouth bass out of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to gently scoop some fish out of these live wells and then slowly release them onto our grass and our reef area here in the river. Welcome to your new home, everybody. So how many do we have here? Okay, so we're going to probably put about 1,500 in this reef right here. And then we're going to go across the bay and we're going to release another 1,500 over there. Great. I'm getting a lot of Good. And you're sticking them right on top of grass, which is good. They enjoy that stuff. It keeps them from getting eaten by other predators that are in the water. So it's kind of like their home, right? Out of the 1,500, how many survive? Well, we expect about 10 to 20 percent of them to live. Um, so that would be about 150, 200 of these will become, you know, catchable size, uh, probably within two to three years. It's because the larger the bass are that we stock and release, the better they are at surviving getting eaten by other predators, right? Like snakeheads or catfish or anything else swimming around here. So how old are these fish? Well, these were all hatched in May or June. Okay. Um, so. Uh, they're really only about, what, two months old, two months old now, so pretty young. I imagine that they'll get up to about 10 or 11 inches uh, by this time next year. Okay. And then uh, after that, who knows, their growth slows down a little bit, um, but we're hoping that the majority of them will reach. 15, 16 inches, which is what anglers like to catch. That's a nice size, you know, yeah. Within about three years. Yeah. Huh. Okay, so we're gonna go to the next location over there to our second reef near Rosalie Island. This is a good spot. We can start releasing fish here. All right, you ready, Rachel? Ready. We have 40 reef balls in each reef, and in addition to those cement reef balls, we have about 20 wood bundles. Um, and so all of that material is enclosed within these buoys that you see all around you. So it's not the entire bay here, it's simply um, just within these um, buoys. And in this reef, the reef balls are at very different water depths. We have some at three feet and we have some at eight or ten feet. And that's important because some smaller bass, it's like these, like the shallow water areas, whereas the bigger body fish, the bigger bass, they would like deeper water areas. So we can add habitat for a range of different sizes for a particular species like large ones. So the ones that we released today, that grow to be that 15 inch size of the anglers want, will they stay right in this area and just in the deeper water? Well, um, as they get older, they're likely to leave the area on their own. Okay. Um, you know, these guys, they build nests when they spawn and those nests are about a meter wide. So there's only so much room here for them to build those nests. So as they get bigger, older, they'll leave these areas. Um, the other thing is, of course, anglers catch bass and they'll move them around as well. Right. So, you know, once they get to about 12 inches, an angler may put them in their bass boat and then travel them down the river a ways, and that'll also redistribute the fish. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take this reef, this wood reef bundle, we're going to put it on the railing here, and then release it straight to our reef. Ready? One, two, three, let it go. Now, let's sink it by taking up that cinder block. 
All right, you ready? Yep. All right, one, two, three. Woo! And there she goes. <laughs> so she'll sit there for a while and hopefully attract some fish. Awesome. How deep is the water here? It's about three to four feet right now. So as the tide comes in, it gets a little deeper. For, for right now, it's about three feet. Cool. All right, let's get this one in. Okay, on this side? Sure, this side sounds good. All right, you want to come on over? Yeah. All right. Yep. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and dump this wood straight into the water. You ready, Rachel? Yes. Yeah. All right, one, two, three. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and sink it. You ready? Ready. One, two, three. Jump. <laughs> Great job. Good Great job. job. So we're going to let that sit for a while and hopefully the, uh, the fish will enjoy it. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, Drew here. For more information on today's show, go to aquakids.tv. Welcome back to Aquakids. To me, the ocean is my home away from home. I've grown up around the ocean my entire life and I love every chance I get to escape into its natural wonders. My name is Kai and in Hawaiian that means ocean or water and I really feel connected to the water every day of my life. My parents are natural watermen too. My mom has actually been to two Olympic games in kayaking and I've grown up around that lifestyle. My mother, Shelly Oates Wilding, started Ikaika Hawaii to change the lives of youth around the nation and also grow up at this new generation of amazing watermen. My most favorite moments in the ocean have been with the Sea Inspiration team. I feel so happy to be a part of their crew and I love making a positive impact with their message. I'm Kai the Ocean Guy and you're watching Sea Inspiration. Now, back to Aqua Kids. fish the waters to see what lives in the reef. There we go. All right, so Andrew, let's go ahead. Well, anything that comes up, anything that you see coming up to the surface, let's go ahead and scoop it. We'll bring it in, take a look to see what kind of species it is, and then we'll release it, okay? Okay, sounds All great. Right. Let's bring that in and see what it is. Oh, what do you got there? Oh, perfect. This is a little river herring. Oh, nice. Yeah, so there's a... They're actually not doing so well in the bay. So there's a, uh, a, a basically a moratorium on them. No, it's a river herring. Oh, okay, cool. You got him. Oh, yeah, perfect grab. Let's see what we got. That looks like one of our little largemouth bass, either one that we released or maybe uh, one that was just spawned and grew out here. Joey, I think I might have gotten some kind of sunfish here. I think you did. Let's see what that is. Oh, very nice. This is a pumpkin seed. Nice. Very nice find. Yeah, they love structure, like the stuff that we just threw out there, like wood or the little reef balls that we tossed. So it's very nice to see these guys using this reef area as well. Great. Here, Joey, I got one. Hey, let's see what that is. Ooh, a carp. Let's check it out. Oh, you know what? Or a goldfish? It could be a big goldfish. That's right. <laughs> it's tough to see. Sometimes you got to look for those barbels at the mouth. And this guy does not have any barbels. Carp have barbels and goldfish don't. It's yeah, and this is definitely a goldfish. Wow, that's a big one. Right. Where do you think this came from? Uh, probably someone's aquarium. That's correct. <laughs> they, so they threw out back in the day uh, goldfish from the aquaria, and uh, now we have a pretty big population of goldfish in the Potomac River. Wow. Do they pose a threat since they're not natural born here? They don't, th they don't pose a threat to our aquatic resources, no. Um, the way they live their life, the way what they feed upon, doesn't really pose a threat to our native, our natural resources here, okay. like like the snakeheads do. Right. I think you have a large mouth. You are exactly right. That is a large mouth bass, one of those little babies. We may have put him out here, or maybe he was born out here on his own. There's one down there. Oh, it looks like we got a big large mouth. Oh, very nice. That's what you want to see out here. That's why we put these reefs out, these little reef balls out. 
There you go. Maybe that was the mama of the baby that Beautiful. we just pulled out. That's a really nice largemouth bass. Wow, you can see where they get their name from there. That's right. A very big mouth. Joey, yeah. what kind of sunfish is this? That is a bluegill. Oh, okay. So it's related to pumpkin seed, right? Cool. Um, but it's a, yeah, bluegill, you can see those nice bars yeah. up and down the backside, and it doesn't have a red spot at its, uh, near its eye. So that's a gizzard shad. They're a real important food item for largemouth bass and other fish as well. Uh, these guys can actually get pretty big, um, and this is, you know, kind of a, a big guy. So let's go ahead and put him back. There we go. Well, that wraps up another great episode. Joey, thank you so much. Well, thank you guys for helping us put some wood into the water, putting some bass into the water, and coming out to help monitor these reefs so we know if they're effective or not. Thank you. We definitely you. had a blast. Thank you to everyone who made this possible. Thank you. We'll see you next time on Aqua Kids.